The Lyrians marched in silence, too tired to keep in step with the drums. Suddenly, the wind rose to a howl, and there was a loud crash of thunder. Blast! Meave leapt from her saddle. We camp here. Pitch the tents, quickly! Quickly! As the soldiers rushed to unload the wagons, a wall of water came down, soaking them to the bone. Later, they sat in their leaky tents, huddled, teeth chattering, violent coughs rocking their frames. The storm raged the night through, then finally passed before dawn. Meave emerged from her tent to wring out her coat. Raynard approached, his gait heavy, his face grim. Your Majesty, several men of the 11th, a dozen or so, sought to flee last night. Sentries stopped and bound them. Now they await your judgment. Meave fastened her still wet coat. She knew well why the men had tried to desert. They longed for their kin, had lost sight of victory, perhaps even no longer believed. Yet the marching and fighting seemed destined to go on forever. The Queen sympathized. She too was spent, and many doubts plagued her. Yet she knew the deserters had to be punished. The question was, to what extent? Meave entered the tent where the prisoners stood. Some of the men looked away, ashamed at their deed. Others raised their gazes to meet hers, their eyes red, tearful, pleading. Yesterday, we were comrades in arms, Meave said to the soldiers bound at wrist and foot. Today you stand before me as criminals I must judge. You well know how I deal with wrongdoers in wartime, without delay nor mercy. Sergeant, every third man to the scaffold, the others to be lashed. That's an order. The sergeant led them out. Meave then heard them counting off. One, two, three. One, two, three. Some muffled weeping, the hiss and creak of ropes pulled taut, and then there was silence. As the Queen walked to her tent, she did not glance at the soldiers' bodies, though she sensed them swaying gently in the wind. She had done what had needed to be done. Ma'am, I've come to tell you I must leave your army. What? Why? Against my better judgment, I joined you to heal your wounded. I realize now that was a mistake. What exactly do you mean? What you did runs counter to all my beliefs. You had your reasons, and have them still, I know. Yet I've no desire to abet them. I'd feel shame to lend a hand. What can I do? Is there anything that would make you stay? No, ma'am. Farewell. So be it. Good luck and Godspeed, Isabel. You all know the penalty for desertion. Meave said to the soldiers bound at wrist and foot. I ought to have every last one of you hanged. Yet, we've come far along a treacherous road. Endured hardships extreme. This I considered against your crime. You shall lose rank and receive no pay for one year. Now get out of my sight. Immediately! The deserters mumbled their gratitude and rushed out of the tent, fearing the Queen might yet change her mind. Meave then left for her quarters, anger and bitterness eating her up from the inside. One day, the quartermaster approached with news to report. Alas, bad news. Your Grace, our food stocks have near run out. And about villages, folk have naught to spare, not even to trade. The Queen dispatched small groups of scouts. They were to scour the countryside for hunting camps, beekeepers, charcoal burners, any souls willing to trade food for coin or goods. The first scouts came back around dusk. The last three detachments returned not at all. At first, Meave suspected they'd fallen prey to monsters, the beastly or Nilfgaardian kind. Later, she learned the men had left naught of their belongings behind. She'd been soft-hearted toward deserters. 
This lot decided they too would give it a try. That night, Meave lay still but sleepless. Beneath thin covers, she was cold, hungry, irate. <laughs>